Welcome to Healthy Cooking with your friendly Italians. I'm Jim Barrow and I'm Marilyn Barrow. And uh, we started on radio many, many years ago on WSFW doing this type of program. So now, ladies and gentlemen, we're back. <laughs> what this show is all about is to enjoy Italian food prepared simply, uh, to have with your friends, to sit down and enjoy it with your family, and not get all excited about food. Enjoy it and do your own thing. We're going to be talking uh, uh, some helpful hints about cooking. We're going to give some recipes. We're going to be talking about certain products that we like and maybe a few gadgets and gadgets. Who knows where we're going to go? Uh, now, I tend to get carried away with cooking maybe not so healthy. I try to keep them in, on track and remind them that there are certain things that we can do by lessening some of the fats and a, a few of the things that we can make it more healthy. I've been married to this woman for 51 years and she's kept me on track for 51 years. So uh, It's she not easy. <laughs> well, I, I, yeah. uh, now, we want to have some fun. Uh, when, when, when you cook, you want to enjoy. Uh, you want to sing? Sing. You want to dance? Dance. Whatever you want to do, do it because of the enjoyment of you doing something that you like to do and showing your own personality. Uh, that's what I do. Uh, I, uh, I just try to do my own thing. And remember, a recipe is just a guide. It's the starting point of what you're going to do. Take that recipe and make it your own. You want to change it? Change it. You don't like this in it? Okay, fine. Get something else. Put it. Put something else in it so that you enjoy it. Now, what I do, I write it on a sheet of paper like this, see? And I attach to it this little clip, which I can put up above my stove on the on the hood, which is metal, and I look at it and I can read it and I can go from there. When I finish with it, I throw it away, unless I really like to keep it. But who knows where I'm going to keep it? I got the recipes in the back, so uh, that's one thing that uh, I find very very uh, good to do. You can also look up many recipes on the internet today. You don't need cookbooks or you don't uh, you know you don't need the paper or whatever. Uh, if you have a few ingredients in your refrigerator, then put a few ingredients in on your line and look up a recipe. You'll come up with something which will guide you to using what you already have in your home. And the recipes that we give today uh, will be available on, uh, from, uh, on the Internet for you all. So let us try to eat together as a family uh, it's given us a chance to talk, to bond, and we're going to try to use local products, fresh products. Of course, in this time of the year, fresh products is somewhat difficult locally. And in Europe, there's a movement called the slow cooking movement. And slow cooking doesn't mean a crock pot. Slow cooking means exactly what we've been talking about. Getting together with your family, sitting down, eating a dinner together, talking, eating local products, eating fresh products, and eating healthy products. So that's what we're going to be trying to do for you today, and I think you'll really enjoy that type of thing. The other thing is to try to include your family, if you can. If you have children, it's always fun to let them chop or do something. Uh, at Christmas time, we often have a gnocchi party where our grandchildren make gnocchis with us and then we serve them. So those are the kinds of things that bring families together and help uh, enjoy food. That's the important thing is that you're, it's, it's a celebration. And today we're going to be talking about pasta. I mean what else is there more Italian <laughs> than pasta? And I have got with us today an expert on pasta. My wife. <laughs> My wife, uh, 
My Her maiden name was uh, Procino. And going back, there was a company called Procino Rossi Macaroni Company. Or PNR. Or PNR. As it later became known. So she knows everything there is to know about pasta. And I'm telling you, there were many discussions on how to cook the pasta, what the sauce should be, and the family, you know, this was a big family tradition. And there's certainly, I have all kinds of ideas, of, or certainly knowledge of how pasta should be made and how it should be cooked. And one thing that PNR does, and all good ma manu manufacturers of pasta do, is they use semolina flour. And it's a harder flour, and it creates a more al dente uh, quality uh, of, of a pasta. And do we know what al dente means? Al dente means to the tooth. So it means that there's something, when you bite into that pasta, there is something there. It's chewable. It's not m what I would call mush. And that only comes if you have pure semolina in your product, in a dried product. One exception to that is we like Barilla. Barilla is the biggest manufacturer of pasta in the world. We have a, a plant that is located in Avon, and they sell what they call a Barilla Plus. Now, Barilla Plus has got a lot of other things in it. It's healthier for you. It hasn't got all as much wheat. It tends to not be quite al dente, and, but it is the one product that both uh, Marilyn and I will use at home. Other than that, we use a semolina product. This is also a good way for children to have because it does have beans and kinds of things. The only thing with it is that you have to undercook it uh, before you put it in the sauce. You have to be very careful when you take it out so that doesn't taste too mushy either. All right, now the first pasta dish you're going to make, again, remember we're trying to keep this simple and easy. You can, get, you can do this in 15 minutes at the best. We're going to take pasta and we're going to cook it in a pesto sauce. I'm not sure if you all know what a pesto sauce is, but basically we hear pesto sauce being made with basil and pine nuts and cheese and some other things. Very good, uh, very good pesto. But you can make pesto with anything you like. This time of the year, if you were going to use basil and you went to the store to buy basil, it gets pretty expensive to buy the amount of basil you need to make a pesto. What I do, I, I use parsley. S tastes as good, uh, if not better, than, than, than uh, the basil. I don't like pine nuts, so I change. I put other kinds of nuts. Marilyn likes walnuts. I, uh, I like uh, pecans or... Um, Pistachios. Al almonds, uh, pistachios. You can even put a little arugula. It, it's just making it a green with, with some olive oil. You can have a touch of lemon in it. But it's a wonderful sauce to put on a really nice pasta, uh, particularly maybe a pasta that you buy that isn't dried. You know, you like the cavatelli or the there's a few uh, gnocchi kinds of products that are out, and that's a very nice sauce for that kind of dish. And it's, a sim it's so simple. You have a food processor, right? You dump in your parsley in the case of uh, with, with me. You either put walnuts, pecans, almonds, pistachio in it. You add some Parmesan cheese, some scallions, some lemon zest, and you mix that together and, and then dribble some olive oil over the top. And when it comes into a paste, you're done. Now, this is going to make more pesto than you can use for a, for a family. And that I do that purposely because what I'll do is I'll take that pesto and I'll put it on a sheet of plastic and I'll roll it up and I'll put it in the freezer. Now, when I want uh, pesto for something else, all I have to do is go in the freezer and get it. In fact, I got some here. here Here's your pesto. <laughs> I show you my pesto. There. That is a is pesto. It might look like something else, but it's pesto. And you just slice a piece off, all right? Now you now you go ahead and you cook your pasta. You uh, put a little you put the pasta in your saute pan which you're gonna serve in. Put the put the pesto in, put some of the water, the cooking water from the pasta, 
and swirl it around and you're done. That's it. And you have a wonderful tasting pasta uh, with this very easy uh, way of doing it with, in this case, uh, parsley. You could, you could use arugula. You could use anything you want to create that type of an ingredient, a, a vegetable type of ingredient into it. I also, in the same manner, tomato paste. You know, you get your tomato paste and you use a little bit of tomato paste. What do you do with all the rest of the tomato paste? Usually goes bad on you. Aha! I put it in a cylinder like I, I did with the uh, with the parse uh, with the pesto. Roll it up anytime I want any. I cut it off, and it's done. And I use it as I as I need it. So that's two different ways of uh, of using something as a little helpful reminder of using something, and it makes it easy. Uh, Marilyn. Um, What's I going to say? Oh, you can also use this pesto if you were grilling up some meat. Slab some uh, some of it on. If you had fish, you can put fish on it. Uh, anything you can. You, you, it's got multiple multiple uses. You could use it in gnocchis, and that's going to be our next recipe that I'm going to give you. But it's a little different gnocchi than the gnocchi that you might uh, be familiar with. So uh, and remember to use uh, use that pasta water on any type of pasta you cook. Put a little bit of it in. Usually, a, I say a little bit, maybe a cup. cup. Uh, well, I don't, and make sure that you do heat your, put your pasta back into the sauce in some kind of a, con, um, a fry pan or something so that you're heating it all together before you serve it. That's why you make it extremely al dente before, because you are cooking just a little bit, maybe a minute or two in the sauce. Another thing, uh, another little hint I want to show you is garlic. I cannot cook with garlic. I don't think anybody should be allowed to cook without garlic, all right? Mm -hmm. Now, garlic can be a pain, you know, to peel it and do all that type of thing. What I do, see this little jar? It's full of garlic. I'll take three or four heads of garlic, put them in whole, put olive oil over the top, and put it uh, saute at a very low temperature for about 15, 20 minutes. Take it off, drain it off, and the garlic skins will come off. I mean, they just peel right off. And you put it back into the garlic that you cooked in. The oil that you the cooked. The oil that you cooked in. And now you have, you have the garlic, and you also have the oil that you can use, which is all flavored with the garlic. And uh, it's an easy way to do it. And you can go to a place like Aldi's uh, uh, has uh, uh, garlic that is very inexpensive. You buy a, a tube of garlic that has maybe four or five uh, heads in it and use it that way. It makes a very, very easy way of cleaning garlic without taking and trying to peel it and mash it and all that type. Now, when, this, when you want to mash this, you take one of those heads and you just press very lightly. It's, it's very... It's, it's soft, and then use it whatever, whatever way you want to do it. It also is much m more mellow when it's done yeah, that way. It, does, it isn't the strong flavor that you get when you're sautéing garlic and possibly could overcook it a little bit. It gets too brown, then there's a very strong flavor. If you keep it sort of brown, and, and this way particularly, it is very mellow and mild and wonderful. Yeah, and I, I also want to talk about, I'm not, I'm not, doing meatballs here today <laughs> but, and I don't do meatballs and there's one reason why I do not do meatballs because I can go in downtown Seneca Falls to Nona's and I can get the best meatballs <laughs> you can eat I can't make them that good so why even try so I wanted to tell you those meatballs are outstanding this is particularly good for people like us that's two or one person that doesn't want to go through all the trouble nor they would make too much they couldn't even buy and you know if they had to buy all the ingredients they'd have more than they could need then you just get them you know they have sauce you can make your own sauce whatever but it is helpful to find these kinds of ingredients that help you when you're it, uh, trying to cook for two or one person. Also wanted to spend a moment talking about olive oil, uh, a very, very important ingredient uh, in Italian cooking, good for you, 
And we, we hear, and somebody's going to hit me in the head, some Italian's oh, going to hit me in the head when I say this. They, you know, they say the, the Italian olive oil is the best. Well, I disagree. The best olive oil is Spanish olive oil. Uh, if you like a stronger flavor olive oil. Greek olive oil is, is very, very good. And over at, uh, at Walmart, they have a, a blend uh, olive oil for what they call Mediterranean olive oil which is very good and use when I do the garlic I use the Mediterranean olive oil in it. So there's uh, but do use olive oil. Well, do use extra, extra virgin, virgin olive oil. That's right. That is important. The extra virgin is really very important and there is a much nicer flavor. The the only time you don't I won't use olive oil is if and God forbid I fry something. Mm. Marilyn will hit me in the head <laughs> if I fry something but if I did fry something, I wouldn't fry it in olive oil. I would fry it in, in a ca canola oil or something like that. Well, the like problem that. is that olive oil does not have as high a, uh, it burns at a, a, a lower temperature. So you need something, either canola oil or peanut oil, when you're really frying because you don't, the temperature of olive oil is not good. It's wonderful for sauteing. It's not good for frying. Okay, that gets us into the next thing I, I want to talk to you about and give you a recipe for which is gnocchi. This is a gnocchi not made with potato, made uh, with rigotta. And it's so much easier than getting all the flour out and getting all, all messed up with the flour. This is an easy, easy recipe, uh, and I want to I wanna share this with you. <clears throat> Again, we're going to get that blender out, okay? And we're going to put in that blender, we're going to put the uh, rigotta, we're going to uh, put in some salt, pepper, eggs, Parmesan cheese, and a little bit of flour. And mix it up until it is well blended, okay? Take it out. Put it in the refrigerator for 15, 20 minutes. It is now ready to cook. You haven't touched it with your hands, and it's all ready to cook. You get a pot of water, and you bring it to a boil, and you get a spoon. Actually, you get two spoons. You get one spoon, dip it into... Uh, the mixture and the other spoon uh, push it out and let it let it go into the uh, water and they will rise to the surface and uh, they'll cook for about 10 minutes is about the, the amount of time you want it. you take them out with a scoopine Marilyn tell them what a scoopine is well some kind of sieve <laughs> 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 you, you know, one of those, sieve, you have a small little um, a sieves, just use one of those, uh, and that'll work very well. Now, at this point in time, you can take it, uh, put it in the refrigerator, and, and when you're ready to, when, when you're ready to, uh, to eat it, uh, and I'll get to that in a moment, what you do, uh, you bring them out, or you can freeze them. Make a lot of them. Freeze them. When you want to use them, you can take them out. So now, when you cook them, instead of going through the uh, sautéing on top of the stove, you put them in a single layer in a, in a baking uh, uh, dish, put whatever sauce you like, whatever your favorite sauce with it is, it, sprinkle it with some, some cheese, and stick it in a 350 degree oven for about 15, 20 minutes. It comes out, the smell is fantastic, and it's ready to be eaten uh, that way. It is, that is a perfect one for the pesto. Yeah, you, you could put a touch of butter in that, uh, you know, with the pesto, and you would have an absolutely wonderful dish. What about what you like a lot, sage? I do like I sage and sage. butter. Yeah. Uh, gnocchi, that's another very quick and easy. That's great when you have fresh sage in the summer. So uh, that's our second recipe. So, again, they're available on the Internet uh, for you. Uh, and... Uh, I wanted to show you a couple other things. I'm not going to tell you what these are. We're going to talk about <laughs> it the next time. But I want to. I got some gizmos, gidgets. See that right there? I wonder, it has to do with pasta, but a different type of pasta that we'll talk about next time. Also, I got this. See what that is? It has huh? ridges in it. Got ridges in it. I wonder what that could be. Could be for gnocchi, maybe, who knows? Talk to you about it next time. Uh, I got other things too, but I'm not gonna show you those now, okay? So, I, I hope you enjoyed uh, uh, what we've been doing here today. 
We surely have enjoyed being with you, and we want you to have fun cooking, okay? That's the important thing is and enjoy it and make it make it fun, make it healthy, that's uh-huh. easy. See, see, see? <laughs> that healthy, isn't that healthy. hard. Yeah. That really isn't. It's a matter of choosing the right ingredients and cutting down on your fats and cutting down on frying. I'm not saying that you know you can't use some of the you can use anything. But the point is that you just carefully look at your list of ingredients and uh, try to use things that are better for you. And, and buy local. And if you get a chance, we talked about Barilla. Barilla is a good product, as I said before, but <clears throat> and they have this plant over in Avon. During the summer, you can take tours through that plant, and it is really fascinating. Not only do you get a great tour, but then they give you Barilla bags, Barilla pastas, mm-hmm. and all kinds of and great demonstrations And demonstrations. Also. And it's a nice uh, uh, day. It usually is on a Saturday. They leave from Canandaigua at the uh, Wine Institute, and they take you over there, and you can spend uh, about two or three hours doing it. And it's really, really enjoyable to see how they make macaroni today or pasta today compared to when uh, Marilyn's family made well, it. Well, that was the fascinating thing for me to take the tour. It's basically the same process. The only difference is that nobody ever touches this pasta. The the semolina comes in on carloads and goes from the outside of the building in through vats, and it's never touched by to, human uh, hands. By human hands till it ends up already packaged and ready to go um, to be uh, dispersed to stores and those kinds of things where they're selling it. But the process itself is still the very same. So that was fascinating to me. And when they finish, when it comes off the line, they box it, they've got a truck waiting there for it. They put it in a truck and away it goes. That's it. It was amazing. So anyways, nice talking to you people. I hope you enjoyed it. If you got any questions, Send them in. I'll try to answer them next week. If, if I can't answer them, Marilyn can. <laughs> and if both of us can't answer them, we could lie. Well, we can find an answer somewhere. <laughs> find we'll, an answer. we'll find an answer. So enjoy, <laughs> enjoy eating. Enjoy spending some time with your family. And come back and see us uh, next time in a couple of weeks. Okay? All right.